we begin our story in the town of Lawrence, Massachusetts. On my first day of shooting here, I found this old alleyway, and in this alleyway was this 80s style auto body sign. The paint was peeling off, the colors are faded, and in a place where almost no one will ever see it. Directly adjacent to this sign is this beautiful apartment building with this rusted tin siding and caged windows. It stands so out of place amongst the rest of the town. It harkens back to the early days of this small city. The sign itself is pretty plain. It's the scene that really makes it. The apartment building, the graffiti, the reflections, the furniture, it's all tucked away in this alley, hidden from the world. And here I stand, perched atop of this repossessed trailer. Man, the lens is super wet. Not this one, though. So it turns out the sign I wanted to photograph is partially there. I was here last fall and I had issues with the film and camera I was using. I was using Fuji FP100C and the Polaroid 250. First time I ever tried to shoot this sign behind me was fall of 2020 and I was using my Polaroid 250 with some Fuji FP100C and I was having some issues with either the shutter or the film itself and uh, the images didn't turn out and uh, subsequently the video never got made but I had some troubles that day and especially when I was actually filming over here I had some troubles with the actual camera not this camera but at the time I was having issues with my Sony A6, uh, A6100 I was going to say A6000 after shooting, I realized I was just not having any luck. The camera was malfunctioning. The film was just giving me blank frames. And it didn't help that I had garnered an audience of hecklers. These hecklers were homeless people. And uh, it wasn't so much of a playful heckle as it was uh, more, more threatening. It's not the first time and it probably won't be the last. But the reminder of that day and my frustrations from that day were still lying on the ground. So to those of you who are looking to shoot in areas where there is heavy drug use, please Make sure you wear thick boots, watch your step, and don't ever kneel down. Like I said, the last time I was here, I got heckled by some homeless people. Uh, in the town of Lawrence, there are a tremendous amount of homeless people. And uh, as you can see, there's needles with no caps just everywhere. So you gotta be really careful when you're out shooting in these type of locations. Also, I don't wanna run over any needles. <laughs> Lawrence to Holyoke, rags to riches, so to speak. That's tongue in cheek because Holyoke isn't far behind Lawrence in crime rate. But I do love Holyoke and it's really one of my favorite towns in Massachusetts. And because I do come here a lot, I know exactly where to go to find some really great vintage signs. Some of these great vintage signs are hidden away and hard to spot, but it takes a keen eye to find them. But I did enjoy the scene. Not often is it when I come by that there's a little homeless encampment on the front steps, but today there were, and uh, unfortunately the shot's blurry, and uh, hey, mistakes were made, but I'm still happy to show you those as well. Right around the corner, you get a beautiful view of the steeple of City Hall and some hand-painted signs that adorn a boarded up window. I really wanted to focus on the signs and trash can. It's like that scene in Stand By Me when Gordy shoots the old trash can behind the restaurant. Maybe that's kind of a little too on the nose, but this has me thinking that the more I shoot things that I don't normally photograph, it always seems like I'm attracted to the things that remind me of my childhood. 
When I find these types of things, it does kind of feel instinctual in a sense, and I don't really pick up on it until I really sit down and analyze the images. And then I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, stand by me. I'm not sure why you would hand paint a sign on the back of a building in an alleyway where not many people are going to be able to see it, stating that you have breakfast and lunch, but it's just a, a little piece of uh, interesting art along the side of this, uh, this road here and in the alleyway. And uh, certainly makes for an interesting composition, that's for sure. Two of the most iconic storefronts with some really great vintage signage in this town are the neighboring King Habermans and Hapco. Two Holyoke landmarks, Habermans was the go-to for tools and paint, and sadly, in 2016, they closed for good after 89 years. As for Hapco, they are gone too. Sad reminders of days past. I can't put my finger on the exact date for either its birth or its subsequent death, but locals have told me stories that date all the way back to the 1950s. On the side of Hapco, just coming up of uh, this grassy knoll over here, which really isn't the greatest vantage point, and I'm fully aware of that. This photo isn't my favorite. Here is a photo from the day, and as far as I know, there's no known photographer of this image, but it does make me think whoever took this shot obviously cared, and uh, it doesn't go unnoticed and is greatly appreciated. I do want to talk about my methodology when it comes to shooting these signs or ads and what I'm trying to do. And my idea is to capture the scene and not just the sign or the ad. I think the environment can really help elevate the image. And that's sort of what I wanted to do with this entire video was not just focus on the signs, even though in some of these images I did, but most of them are an all encompassing look at where these signs are. shot about 80% of these images with the 55 f2.8, which I absolutely love. It's obviously not the sharpest lens and it's really soft in the corners and some people would call that coma. It, there's something about it that just feels right. Sometimes it's the imperfections that really give your images a little bit more character. And if you're looking for a great character lens, this is a pretty good choice. I also shot all of this on Kodak Ektar 100 and, uh, well, I have to say, I have fallen in love with this film, even though I have completely knocked it in the past. I'm convinced that everything looks better through a waist level finder. Everything looks better through a waist level finder. I'm convinced of it. I do feel like this could be an ongoing project and there are a lot of really great photographers that do shoot vintage signs and ads. Uh, two of my favorites being Tim Anderson and Sarah Moore. Both of them have their own unique way of capturing these scenes. Sarah really kind of has an eye for the detail and, and allows the story to be created around these vintage signs. And Tim has just an incredible portfolio of work centering around the famed Route 66. Both these photographers are a huge inspiration and kind of the reason why I started doing this video. And uh, I think it's kind of opened up a whole new avenue for me. And that's something that I really like to do with a lot of my videos and uh, my photography is not to limit myself to just one thing in particular, but to allow myself to get creative with different styles and different techniques and different formats and things like that. And it's all about progressing and kind of finding the thing that excites you to get you out there and start to photograph things. So as you guys probably know, I've shot here quite a number of times in the past. Um, it's 
just a pretty solid spot to go to when you're trying to find something interesting and just another day out here trying to photograph signs. It feels like fall. Actually, it smells like fall even though it's, uh, it's April 8th, April 8th, something like that. Man, it just has a, a beautiful New England fall feel today. So I got my jean, je my jean shirt on. I really do think this could be an interesting thing to kind of continue with. And I hope you guys really liked hanging out with me for a little while. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Huge shout out to Jamal the photographer for the 645 and I've linked his channel in the description below so you can go ahead and show him some love. I've missed this little camera and I'm glad that I have it back again. 645 for me just feels like a really natural way to kind of get back into medium format. Not that I'm giving up on 4x5 but being able to kind of lighten the load, loosen up and just get back to the basics with a medium format camera is a really nice way to just unwind. No, 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 yeah, keep going, keep going, come on. Don't go on my shot. Oh man, that was a close one, huh?